about the anatomy and different things. What's the name of it? Energetic medicine. Biofeedback for, philosophy. Yeah. There's some ideas about gentle biofeedback philosophy. I want you to review that book. Here's some of the books that you need to read for your diploma in biofeedback. Quantum Nutrition, home use book. This sets a basic idea for people to take at home. Energetic Medicine, the basic ideas of the form of science that we're going to be using. Here's the Injuries in Sports book to understand the success that we've had in these areas. The basic idea of the voltage, amperage, resistance, hydration, oxygenation, and pH. The tongue diagnosis for face and body diagnosis. The body electric and the integral details. These are some of the books that you need in the course. This is suggested as well. The true healthcare debate about evidence-based and of course the most important is the biofeedback wellness consultant book. This is what you That's need what to help to learn. To talk about and it's called what? Operationalizing? Yeah. Okay. You were one of the first ones I, I actually uh, did a tape off with. Yes. yes. And you make up stuff. <laughs> I did. Yeah. You kept looking. Now, if we are dealing with symptoms, we are not diagnosing. If we, a, an, an analogy is headache is a symptom, it is head pain. Okay? It's not a disease. That's a symptom. If it was um, a migraine, that's a disease. That's assuming there's a reason for the headache. Just a classification of a symptom is not diagnosis. If we try to intuit a group of symptoms together, that is called a diagnosis. Diagnosis. We are, uh, you are not licensed to diagnose yet, but you are able to take a symptom profile. This is basically what a homeopath does, and this is what a biofeedback person does. And what I'm going to ask you to do in its simplest form is to try to get a grip on getting a symptom inventory that allows you to really understand and help the patient as best you can. The first thing we need to recognize is we do not lead off with what's wrong with you. We try to set the tone for wellness and ask questions about what is good with you, what is well with you, etc. And try to understand the patient and try to hold back as a secondary process to get into what's wrong with you. Never as a primary. Physician, heal thyself. So number one, start with establishing the positive professionalism and discuss wellness, health. Discuss these things. Make the patient feel comfortable, relaxed, and that you're listening and you care and share. Then number two, do the suppression obstruction to cure questions, the SOC, and then understand the lifestyle problems. Do this inside the computer. And as you do this, start to teach them. Then, number three, do the xeroid test. Scan the patient's body electric and reactivity. After you've done that, then you're ready now to do, number four, a symptom inventory to understand what is the current problem so that we can know better how we can help or how we have helped in the past. And if you've done all this, this lifestyle inventory symptom profile, this is billable with a CPT code. Doesn't mean the insurance companies will pay you direct, but you can give a super bill to the patient and they can collect themselves. It's not easy. Patients are coming to you with the, the flat out, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you today? It's a good idea. What's right with you? What's right, you know, how are you, you know, because uh, as soon as we say, how are we doing, we're asking that 
that, you know, what's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. What we're really trying to find out in the first step is, um, what, what are the good things? What's the wellness, etc. But very, very quickly, patients will then, you know, but I'm here because I got a pain in my ass, you know. So, as we get into understanding the symptoms, I've given you an acronym in the book. I don't know what page it's on. It's a couple pages in there. Yeah. Tit defend. Tit defend, that's it. Tit defend. Give it to me. Hi. T. I. I. T. T. D. D. A. A. F. F. E. N. D. First is type of, of problem. Tell me about the type. I have a pain. Okay. Let's talk about the pain. What kind of pain do you have? Type. Okay. Now, basically, when we're talking about this in medical terms, I like to I like to tell them describe the pain. I like to watch their body movements. I have a sharp pain. Saying a sharp. Or I have a dull ache. I have a spasmodic pain. I try to get them to show me where, this is important, and I want to try to find out more about, I'm analyzing the symptom. I'm not assuming a diagnosis. This is the basis of homeopathy, is to not assume any patterns, but to get them to fully describe what they're doing. And majorly is, once we get this down, when they come back, you will find many, many times on most of your patients that what they told you the first time was all a lie. Mm-hmm. They come back the next time with a whole completely different picture. And now you start to understand what's really wrong is that they're, they're sick in the head. Somebody got a little bit of vital feedback. It just tells you. Yeah. <laughs> but this is when we're trying to get to an, an idea. Now, this is also based into a lead into the homeopathy page. Okay, the homeopathic repertory. And you got type. Next one, intensity, right? What is the intensity now? How bad is your, your pain? And basically, to try to break it into a number of biofeedback terms, 10 to 1, 1 to 10. 10 being high, 1 being low, or 0 being, let's do that. 0 being 0. zero. Operationalization. The what, where, when, how much, how long, and why. Very important for the symptoms. And it, it's biofeedback to now say, what is the, uh, what's the, um, uh, the tension in, in your forehead right now? Number. It's a one. Three. Five. Five. Can you make it a two? Sure. Can you make it a seven? Yeah, I can. That's feedback. That's a feedback loop. Pretty simple practice. Fine. See, biofeedback does not really require a device. You can ask people questions and learn to rate their own feelings. Etc. This is important. We can write this down so we get a grip on, you know, this, so that we can see if there's improvements or not in what we're doing. Next. Trigger. Trigger. What triggers. What are the triggers? <laughs> See, we're operationalizing, looking at the intensity, duration, frequency, triggers. What makes you worse? What makes you better? Trying to then understand through this process of the Nelson method, what are the causes of disease that are affecting this? What organs are being treated? Where are the blockages? How to reduce the symptoms and suffering naturally? Where's Roy Rogers' horse? What are the triggers? What triggers you off? This is one of the most productive things that you can ever do, talk to a patient. You'll find out that for the most, the most of the patients are sitting there because they do not understand this. And the most productive thing you can do is talk about what triggers them into this. And when they are stuck, the simple word is usually stress. Does stress <laughs> trigger you? Yes, it does, but other things as well. What other things? And, okay, you know. But we're learning what the triggers are is one of the most productive things we can do as a healthcare practitioner to help them to understand. 
Next. Um, duration. What is the duration? You get headaches for a day, you get them for an hour, you get them for a minute, you get them for a second. What's the duration? Operationalizing so that we can now understand distinctly what, where, when, how much, how long, why, so that when patients come back, we can then say to them that you're getting better if we understand the intensity, the duration, the triggers. This discussion is healing in and of itself. So we can also get back, find out. Alteration evolution. Is there an alteration? This is for, it has it been evolving, is it beginning worse? I've had a headache that's getting worse. Anything that's getting worse, I always suspect that there's something growing, which could be tumor, whatever, or blockage or something, if there's something growing, you know. But alteration, is it getting better or worse? What happens to it? Next. Frequency. Um, How often? Once a month with a period. I go crazy and want to kill my husband. It's his fault. <laughs> this helps to tip you off into cycles. Next. Early intervention. What is the earliest intervention? And basically, a lot of times, the reason that they're sick also is because they've never thought about that. Their idea is crisis mode. What are some of the earliest interventions if it's stress, it's stress reduction? So it's sitting down, with, you know, relaxing. The question you had after was what makes it better? What makes it better? That's, a, that's, that's the key of homeopathy. What makes it better? What makes it worse? As we start to explore this basic idea of learning, patients will then start to find out what related and caused and what were the stressors that produced the problems and how they can start to find networks of support and help to heal themselves in many, many ways. This is so important for all of our medicine. And sorry, different. Different. What do you want different? Oh yeah, what do you want different? If you want something different, you'll have to change. That's our NLP question of the day. Because oftentimes you get this far in the interview and you find out, no, they don't want nothing different. They're just came in because they like it. <laughs> Stupid as that sounds. Sometimes it just needed somebody to talk to. And other times it's just the fact that uh, they don't really want anything different. They're, they just want to kind of cope a little bit better with what they have and they really do, you know, don't want to stop eating the, or smoking or doing anything different. And they just want to understand themselves a little better and that's fine. Cool. But by doing this little operationalizing, operationalizing, we're setting up the operations so that we can understand. When we do this, we must realize that this is a form of behavioral medicine. The hallmark of behavioral medicine is behaviors you reward or attend to, you get more of. Behaviors you ignore or turn away from, you'll get less of. When a child starts to whine, when we attend to it, we'll get more of the whine. This is the basis of behavioral medicine, it is the basis of homeopathy, it is the basis of our biofeedback work. We are not diagnosing, we are taking a symptom inventory. So that's not diagnosing going through all that stuff? Just ask some questions. You're, you're, you're trying to help them understand their life better. Mm -hmm. Diagnosing is not asking if you have a headache. Diagnosing is, you have a headache, I believe it's because you have mm -hmm. a symptom inventory. Yeah, so we just record all this information. You're recording this information so that you can feed back to the patient when they come back the next time. Okay, this was successful, this was not. This is a, this is very powerful healing. It is only diagnostic if you're going to now say, oh, it sounds like you have candida. Mm -hmm. If you're going to attach a disease to this, attach a diagnosis to it. If the patient does, then you want to take them away from that. That's the big thing you got to learn here also. 
When they say, I have, well, I have candida, well, what, what's your problem? I have candida. Well, what's, what's intensity? What's well, normal candida intensity? Get off it. Just tell me, no, no, don't tell me about a disease. Tell me about your, your, your body, your symptoms. What are your alarm states? What are your triggers? Where do you have pain? Where do you have itching? Where, tell me these simple things. As we explore these things with the patient, simply listening, getting them to discuss, insights will arise. They will start to f figure out just what were the triggers, what were the causes, what are the problems in their lifestyle, what's their responsibility in healing. And, but you'll find that so many of the American patients especially have bought into a disease profile. They bought into a disease. So they come in and they say, well, I have multiple sclerosis. Well, what, what, what's your actual symptoms? And they'll say, well, I'm losing my hair and my ass itches. And I'll say, well, that's, that had nothing to do with multiple sclerosis. Yeah, but Bob has multiple sclerosis. And he said, maybe I do. And you, you can't believe how stupid people are, you know, in their symptoms. Mm -hmm. you know, but by going through this, you start to really understand. And then when you take this and look at many of diseases and you learn more and more about medicine, you're going to find out that most of the, of the diagnostic process done by medical doctors is inappropriate and uh, not really, that doesn't really hold well, so Whether you have four or 16 symptoms, you're still put in that category and you're still walking out with the same drugs. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're trying to diagnose you. We're trying to get you to understand yourself better mm -hmm. so that if we do something that makes you feel better, you'll be able to do more of it and capture you know. Physician, heal thyself through knowing yourself. Everybody has a different reason why they got there. And it's not going to be the same solution for everybody either. So. The first part of this operationalism book is very important for you all to read. The second part after this thing uh, starts into a nursing diagnosis to understand more and more symptoms. It is not important for you to read. It's important for you to have. You should skim it. That's the blue one? No, that's the first one. That's the, uh, Halfway through the yellow. Oh, okay. yeah. so, somewhere around uh, one quarter of the way through the yellow, you're going to start sl slipping into a categorizing. You don't really need to see and read and memorize all that shit. But you need to understand this. Yeah. I think that uh, there's, a, there's a demarcation you understand. The other book is more for also general reading and to skim and to generate questions of. Um, but as biofeedback technicians, you need to be aware of more about what's in that book, etc. And also that this is a scientific book to back you up. And then also if you have ideas about things to change in the book to make it simpler, better, whatever, I want your feedback. So now I've been able to put this whole procedure of the Cellier Llanos pathway with the Dr. Nelson pathways so we can understand the flow of the treatment of the cure and to help patients by removing and reducing the causes of disease, treat the organs affected, unblock the blockages, reduce the symptoms naturally, and treat the constitutionals and the metabolic problems. And now we are able to help these patients just by a simple interview, if nothing else. We can also then do the homeopathic repertory of symptoms to get a deeper understanding and program this into the computer. All of this coming together with the SCIO system in biofeedback to help increase awareness and help patients to cure all their different little problems to the best of their ability. So we've gotten this whole idea into the Nelson method. And I hope that this little lesson on how to do the interview process has helped you and will allow you very simply and very easily not to force with the patient but to listen and gradually help them to open up not only their minds to you but their minds to their own life and their own healing force within this is the idea of biofeedback increase awareness of all things so that the body can attend to it naturally thank you